Well, I'm finally back with another video. I hope everybody's doing well or halfway okay. My video is going to be about this realistic STA 47 receiver. I've got no idea what's wrong with it. I think the first thing I should do is go ahead and take the cover off and just take a quick look around the inside and then see if I can go ahead and get the service manual. Only thing is my printer's out so I have to repair the printer. But let me go ahead and at least take the cover off here. I'm right now in the process of removing the cover and I've discovered five screws, two on the bottom, one a little bit more than halfway up to the right and then two on the top. I'm almost done and I think that should be it but uh, don't take my word for it. I'll find out in a minute. Now there were actually just five screws holding the cover on so I guess I was correct and here is the receiver at least the inside in all of its glory there seems to be no missing parts uh, I can't see anything that's burned which is well both of these things are a good sign so my next step is taking a look at the bottom now here's the bottom of the unit I don't see anything out of the ordinary now my next step is to apply power and see if for example the unit lights up or anything if any lights come on I can either use my variable isolation transformer which means I'll be isolated from the household electrical circuit and I can go ahead and vary the voltage I can slowly bring up the line voltage or I can use my light bulb tester and as a last resort of course I could just plug it into the wall outlet but I don't think I'm going to do that because as I said I have those two other things I can fall back on but if I didn't have that I would go ahead and do it like that so we'll go ahead and um, is this thing on? yeah okay it's actually on go ahead and turn on the isolation transformer and bring up the voltage quick like or rather slowly like it's probably smarter um nope nothing at all zilch so my next step is to get a service manual if possible and check out where the fuses are now I couldn't find a service manual online but I did find a little schematic the only problem is I can't print it out because our printer is down and my wife needs to scan some stuff before I actually tear the printer apart who knows I might not be able to get it back together again so I have to wait till she does that but um, going to the back of the unit I did find one fuse so I'm going to go ahead and take that out and take a look at that. Now I just tried to remove this a second ago and I really couldn't so I got something like this here. This thing's actually made for opening jars. Whoa. And okay there it is now here's how this thing looks I just used um, again it's made for actually opening jars this isn't the proper way to use it but it it works so yeah I do need an ohmmeter and I'd actually like to get my fancy analog meter so I can show off a little bit but it's on the top shelf and I'm not sure if it has a battery in it so we're gonna have to use this little uh, El Cheapo meter here and hopefully the um, fuse doesn't run away now it's already starting to jump away from me there okay fuse seems to be good so 
um, unfortunately, it's not a bad fuse. Um, best scenario would have been it would have been a bad fuse, you know, an old fuse, maybe weakened for some reason, and I just replace it, and the unit's as good as new. But we have a deeper problem, evidently. Now I just switched meters. I have my fluke meter hooked up now and the probe here is on the secondary of the primary transformer the main transformer I think there's only one in here by the way and there are actually two different secondary AC secondary circuits so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the unit on and see if I'm getting anything Oh, maybe I should turn the unit on. Okay, that's why. Yeah, I'm getting something. So, go higher and higher and higher. Yeah, actually getting something. And now the service manual doesn't really list any voltages at all. Excuse me, not the service manual, the schematic, it seems like. I took a quick look. I couldn't even see a single uh, listed voltage. So, we are getting... Um, something here. Let me go ahead and um, shut everything off again. I think what I'll do now, I'll just go ahead and put the unit into FM mode and maybe the like the dial indicator um, lamp or something like that will come on. We'll go ahead and see. Now I've actually um, got the unit on again and of course I had a smart idea of putting it using the function switch to select FM of course it was already on FM so uh, and there's nothing going on so let me go ahead and uh, my next step will be to check that other um, AC voltage coming from the transformer well same story here everything good so I'd venture to say um, this unit's so old, I think it's like mid 70s, maybe all the lamps are burned out and the actual unit actually works. Let me take a quick look at the uh, at the lamps and um, I can also go ahead and see if I can't get any kind of an output out of the receiver. The receiver is now hooked up to an 8 ohm dummy load. What I'm going to do is hook up an oscilloscope probe to the terminals here and see if I'm getting any kind of a signal. Here we can see the wires coming from the dummy load hooked up to the speaker terminals of the receiver. This is for both channels. Now I have the unit on and I'm going to do a quick check and make sure there's no DC voltage at the speaker terminals because if I hook up loudspeakers it could potentially damage or destroy the loudspeakers. I shouldn't have very much DC voltage at all. Okay. And so far so good. Now before I even go any further with troubleshooting I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the lights here. None of these lights work at all and well I'm the kind of person if I work on a stereo receiver I need to have some kind of lights before I do anything else so I'm going to go ahead and get these lights going or at least see what's wrong. Now there is one light that's easy to access this seems to be the signal shrink meter and looking at the schematic it told me that this should be 12 volts coming in and that's what I'm going to go ahead and measure. I think the 12 volts were they were coming off the, one of the secondaries of the transformer so it should be an AC voltage so I'm going to go ahead and put the meter across these two terminals here and see if I get anything get anything before I you know just go ahead and randomly start pulling out uh, bulbs so we'll go ahead and um, turn the unit on 
I don't know how I can show this and show the meter at the same time. Um, well, let me go ahead and try to get a measurement here. Carefully so I don't short anything out. And what am I getting? Okay, 11 point some volts, 11 and a half volts. Okay, so it's fairly close. So actually this, um, this here, this uh, lamp should be lighting. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that uh, out. Of course, I'm going to make sure I have the power off when I do that. Now I'm going to try to show me removing the bulb here. I got a little screwdriver. If I can carefully get it in here without breaking the dial cord, that, that would be like an extra big headache. And then I should be able to get it out. Oops, see that? Got to watch that. Okay, almost out, but I have to go ahead and remove the camera to get in there. Now I managed to get the lamp out with the screwdriver and a set of tweezers. And if we look at the lamp, it's got a black mark down the middle, so I'd wager to say this thing is bad. It's own it's open basically. I'm gonna go ahead and the filament's burned out. So I'm gonna go ahead and use an ohmmeter to check this thing out. See if I can keep this out of the way of the camera. Okay, definitely bad. So there's two more of them in this receiver just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and um, check those out too before I do anything else. Now I went ahead and I put in a new little bulb for the signal uh, strength meter. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the unit on now and see if this thing lights up. And of course I used my favorite uh, tools. One being this chopstick here and the other being these tweezers to get it in. So we'll go ahead and uh, turn the unit on. Oh, rather blurry. Let me back out a little bit. Okay. Now we can see it. Okay, so looks like I got one, one light working now. And I'll go ahead and um, change the other two real quick. Now I think I have to take the front plate off in order to get to the last two lamps and for that for sure I'll have to pull the knobs off and it looks like there's two screws here on the top and probably two screws on the bottom well let me go ahead and um, start pulling the knobs and of course the knobs I'll just go ahead and do the first one on camera okay I just I'll just pull them off so the knobs came off relatively easy only one was a little bit tough so I had to use two teaspoons to take that off and the underside here looks like I've got two screws too and then the front plate should come right off well I'm getting closer to my goal and once we Took the front plate off, removed the four screws and all the knobs. We can't forget these little spacers here. I think they went on something like this. I just laid them back on here. Uh, there's one on the left and one on the right. So we'll put these in a the safe place. And I've got everything in a little jar for today. Now my next step is removing this dial plate and I'm going to park this dial indicator to the side somewhere so it doesn't get that much in the way. I'm prone to breaking things. That's about as far as I can go there. Now I see it's going to be easier if I take off this little plastic long piece here. There's three screws. One on the right looks like over here are two. The one on the right's a little bit different so I'm going to have to go make a note of that or take a picture so I know what's what. Now I removed the 
three screws and my next problem is getting this thing out here I've got some plastic tools which I used for repairing cell phones before and well well the thing is the camera's in the way really um, I don't know if I have to do this off camera I'm not. Oh, okay. Well, I'm getting it, but I think, as I said, I think I have to do this off camera. Well, I moved the camera already. I'm bumping it. So um, let me go ahead and do this off camera. Now that this came out halfway. Kind of, well, it came out kind of easily. There's a piece right there, a little fastener. So I'm going to go ahead and see the same thing here. If I can't get something behind this fastener here to loosen it up a little bit, then I'll go ahead and take it out. Unfortunately, I have to shut the camera off because there's no way I can do this here. My camera's just in the way. Now I managed to use this really thin guitar pick to get under here to loosen it up a little bit and um, that brought me far enough as to where I can get this. This is another little tool I used to uh, repair a cell phone. Okay, I got that out. Uh, what we don't want to lose is this right here. There's another piece behind there and it's probably gonna fly out. No, not this time. There's one here and one on the other side. So I'm gonna take those out and put those in a safe spot and clean this up here. It's more like dirt more than anything because well this was plastic on plastic. So again, no. Lose this little piece that I'm pointing the chopstick yeah. Okay, we got that. And we either I think I'm gonna take this out and put it in the safe take this piece, put it in the safe place. 